Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Superpower User. My name is Stanley and in this video, we're gonna be comparing one versus two Samsung 970 Evo Plus SSDs uh, in RAID 0 and just by itself. And I'm also gonna be showing you how to set up a bootable NVMe RAID 0 on a Ryzen Threadripper system. So let's get to it. All right, right off the bat, a little bit about the system that I'm using. I'm using a third gen Threadripper 3960X uh, CPU with a Zenith 2 Extreme motherboard. I've got two 970 EVO plus one terabyte SSDs mounted in the system and they're mounted directly off of the CPU PCIe lanes. So they've got the full bandwidth. Right now, I've got a fresh installation of Windows on just one of the EVO SSDs. So let's take a look at the performance and the specs. All right, now you can see I've got one 970 EVO Plus SSD and the second one here in Samsung Magician. Uh, the second one I haven't even bothered to format. I've only got 60 gigabytes used and that's a fresh installation of Windows. Now, what we can do is run a benchmark on all and just to see what happens. And what we're seeing is 3.5 gigabytes uh, read, 3.3 gigabytes uh, write, and we're doing about 350K read IOPS and 300,000 IOPS on write. Uh, I've also got a 960 Pro, uh, one terabyte SSD. This is an old SSD. Um, and this is gonna be mounted through the chipset. So we can also take another look at this as a bonus. Oh, uh, this is an Evo drive. It's still actually quite a bit faster, almost twice as fast as the old previous 960 Pro drive. So um, this 970 Evo Plus is a monster of a M.2 SSD. All right, we'll run a crystal disk mark test uh, with the 970 EVO Plus. And we're running three, three times with 16 gigabytes per run. So let's just see what happens. All right, and there you go. So uh, let's take a look at the temperature, refresh this and take a look at the temperature of the drive after all these runs. You can see the drive is still sitting at 69 degrees Celsius, uh, which is kind of warm. It's saying it's too hot, but honestly, with uh, 69 degrees Celsius, and it's still able to put out these kind of performance figures, that's pr pretty impressive. From here, I'll show you how to set up RAID 0 on the BIOS and then we can install Windows again. So, be right back. All right, now this is the BIOS of the Zenith 2 Extreme. And what we'll need to do is go over to Advanced. And under Advanced, you'll see SATA configuration. And if you enter SATA configuration, we need to first enable uh, RAID in SATA mode, and then enable NVMe RAID mode. And from there, you save and you reset. Now, the reason why we made the change was because if you go down into advanced now and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you have this new option, RAID Expert 2 Configuration Utility. If you go into here and go to Array Management, we can uh, delete or create arrays. And if I go, oops, if I go to uh, delete array and go to array one and array two and choose on, I can delete and basically initialize them for the new RAID. And of course, you're gonna lose all your data if you do this. So it's just asking you to confirm and hit yes to confirm. So you've lost everything now, 
Now we can create a new ray. Uh, from here, we can choose uh, the volume, we either have a rateable, rate zero, or rate one. Rateable just means that you're prepping these disks to be able to enter a RAID 1 or a 0 down the line. It's kind of a funky uh, option, but personally I've never used it. However, uh, the, the configuration that we're going for is RAID 0. Now, of course, being RAID 0, if you lose one of your disks, then you lose all your data, right? So uh, make sure to have a backup or whatever if you're going with RAID 0 or if you have, um, or you just understand the risks involved because M.2 SSDs are relatively stable, much, much more stable than spinning hard disks. So uh, I just, I'm just gonna be living on the edge a little bit with this RAID 0. Now the next option is to select which disks you want to be in uh, the RAID 0. And, whoops, if you go to select media type, well, we're saying both, but really all we have are NVMe SSDs in here. So we can enable both NVMe SSDs and then we can apply the changes. Now we want the array size to be the full uh, two disk capacity and megabytes is a fine unit. Select cache target size, read cache policy and write cache policy. Uh, yeah, you want both these enabled and select cache tag, cache tag size. We can leave it as default here and then we can go ahead with create array. From there, we can take a look at the properties and here are just the information that we've basically inputted in creating this array as array zero, 1.9 terabytes. It's uh, normal. Uh, RAID 0, 256 cache size. Uh, yeah, so this is, from here you're basically done. So we can save and exit and reset. Now this is just the regular Windows install. Now, notice here that this is uh, not exactly what you left it as, right? We had created this array in the BIOS, and now we have uh, three drives. We have three one terabyte drives. And don't delete these uh, drives right here because this is actually already set up. What we need to do is to load the drivers and go to where you save the drivers that you downloaded from the AMD website. Uh, I've got here AMD RAID drivers and it's the NVMe 9.3 version. And here we got bottom RC config RC RAID. So let's start with the bottom. And we get two options here, and it looks to me like they're identical. Then we need to load the next driver, which is the RC config. No, it's the RC RAID. There's a specific order where you need, need, need to load these drivers. It's, it's, it's kind of infuriating, to be honest, why they couldn't get it right. But um, now you need to load the RC RAID driver. And then you have actually one more where you can load and we're just gonna do it just because Interestingly, I downloaded the driver from the ASUS website, the Xena 2 Extreme website, and it didn't work for me at that time, but I went to the uh, AMD website and downloaded the drivers from there, um, selected the S STR40 or TRX40 chipset, whatever, and downloaded that, and, it, and, and uh, clearly we can see the drive pop up, so it's clearly working. Now, let's go ahead and install, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, now we're back. So, as you can see here, we've got an Array 1, as well as the Samsung SSD 960 Pro that here. Uh, only two drives now, because we're running RAID 0. And we can take a look at the benchmark 
we'll just benchmark it all and just see what happens. All right, take a look at that. So what we're looking at is seven gigs read, 6.6 .6 gigs write with 100,000 100, IOPS and 100K write. So um, that's actually kind of strange here. We've lost quite a bit of IOPS on the read and write, but the sequential is up by quite a bit. So. I'm gonna have to dig a little bit more about that to see what, what's going on there. And here you go. We're looking at a uh, three gigabyte read, 1.7 gigabyte write. This is using the full four, four times uh, PCIe three lane. Um, it looks like the random IOPS on both the uh, 960 and the array are hovering in the 100,000. I don't know what's going on here. I'm gonna have to dig a little bit deeper. It looks like and it's not just uh, isolated to the RAID 0 array. It might be something else impacting this because well, we were pulling, what, 350,000 before? Um, but both are impacted in some way. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, one last test I wanna do before signing off is a crystal disc mark. All right, there you go. So what we're looking at is the one meg uh, sequential read and writes. Q depth of eight and one are relatively uh, doubling of the performance of just one drive and then the random 4k keyed up of 32 and then uh, of one are pretty I, th I think i gotta review the data but i think they're pretty similar to uh the single drive which is ex to be expected because you're not striping those small data pieces um at 4k what i'll do is take a look at the data and run some more benchmarks and let's go to the conclusion All right, let me try to summarize basically what we saw. So with one 970 EVO plus uh, one terabyte drive, we got about three and a half to 3.3 gigabytes of read and write speeds. And with two in RAID zero, we got six to six and a half gigabytes of read and write speed. So we've basically effectively doubled the speeds, uh, which is pretty impressive and ex pretty much what we expected to see. Now, however, what we didn't expect to see was the drop in IOPS. And I, it's actually been a couple weeks since I filmed the first part of this uh, video. I did more testing and basically uh, I've come to the conclusion that once you enable NVMe RAID and the test probably has to do with something with the Ryzen or AMD uh, drivers for NVMe RAID or, or something messing with these Samsung drives that we're basically dropping from 350,000 IOPS of read and write down to about 100,000 IOPS because both the RAID 0 array for my 970 EVO pluses, uh, the both of them, and my 960 EVO or 960 Pro, uh, both suffered a IOPS drop from about 300 plus thousand down to about 100,000. So it's not uh, unique to just the RAID 0 array. It's basically all of the NVMe SSDs that are from Samsung suffered this IOPS drop. Now, um, as soon as I switched it back to AHCI and disabled NVMe RAID and reinstalled Windows or whatever, uh, that problem went away. And uh, basically, it, it looks like whenever you install this uh, NVMe RAID drivers from AMD, uh, these the Samsung Magician software is unable to handle these drives anymore. You can't read. Uh, the health of the drive, you can't do all this stuff. So my guess is there's something in there that uh, broke the drivers for these drives. And uh, unless AMD is able to push out a new updated driver or fix whatever's going on, you're basically gonna get a very big impact to the IOPS. So do I recommend 
uh, RAID 0 with, especially with these Samsung NVMe drives? Not really actually, because as I said, you do get the sequential uh, read and write benefit, but you do take a pretty big hit on IOPS. And really, IOPS is basically what makes your system feel snappy, you know, the inputs and outputs and all these little uh, interactions of the 4K read and write files. Um, you know, the vast majority of the applications are, you know, little teeny tiny files. While if you do end up running very big um, video files, you know, 10 gigs, 20 gigs, and you want to read those really quickly, sure. NVMe uh, RAID 0 uh, M.2 SSDs is still viable. And, you know, clearly we're seeing the doubling of the read speeds. But if you're just running it at a, at a boot drive or whatever, I don't recommend it. Now, like I said, it's been about two weeks since I filmed the first part of this video, and in between the time when I started this video and now, we've had CES 2020, and lo and behold, Samsung has announced their 980 Pro uh, M.2 SSDs, which are PCIe 4.0 compatible. Now, uh, I ended up actually returning the two 970 EVO Pluses because of this news, and I'm gonna be grabbing a 980 Pro NVMe SSD because uh, since it's 4.0 uh, PCIe 4.0 compatible, we're going to be able to see six gigabytes of read and write speeds, saturating almost saturating the by four PCIe 4 lanes, and of course we're going to you know see very good speeds. So with that one uh, brand new SSD that Samsung's going to be coming out with, you're basically getting the same performance as two 970 EVO pluses in RAID 0 without, of course, the impact to the IOPS. So uh, I, I think that's that's the conclusion is don't bother with uh, RAID 0. It, grab or pick up the brand new uh, 980 Pro when it comes out. Or if you're watching this video later, make sure to take a look at the reviews of that drive and make your own comparisons. Now, one last note is I've done all my testing with Samsung M.2 SSDs. I don't know how uh, the Corsair drives or all of the other M.2 SSDs react with the AMD drivers. Maybe there isn't an impact. Maybe maybe it's an even worse impact. I, I have absolutely no idea. I can only speak to uh, the 960 Pro and the 970 Evo Pluses SSD. And, um, I would imagine this would extend to Samsung's entire line of M.2 SSDs because I, th I think there's some kind of driver going on in compatibility and, 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 and whatever. So whatever, these, these tests have been interesting and it's been pretty enlightening. So if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button on your way out and perhaps consider subscribing to see the 980 Pro SSDs once I get my hands on those. So I'll see you in the next one.